wet, windy, sad, gloomy. I think sad. Sad is probably the word I'll use to describe this sort of weather, but we can't control that. What we could control though, is whether Ford are gonna make an ST anymore. And they are, calm down, for the Puma, but not for the Ford Fiesta. Now, for whatever reason, Ford are not making that Fiesta. We're still gonna have the Puma ST, which is this, but this, in fact, is slightly different. Now, even when we pop in here, it's still hard to notice that this, in fact, is the mild hybrid version of the ST. So we have two, we've got the normal 1.5 and then we've got this, the one litre mild hybrid EcoBoost engine, which is still quite fun. decides hmm the way you are driving right now might require me to or might allow me to use some battery to get you going instead of just full engine and what that does is it allows the car to be more efficient because technically if I'm going up to say 40 miles an hour I don't need to use loads of petrol instead I can use a bit of petrol and a bit of petrol a bit of petri, a bit of battery. <laughs> petri, that's the new way we're gonna call EVs, but a bit of petrol and a bit of battery. So effectively, petri to get me going. And it doesn't charge when you're driving, but instead when you let off the throttle and the car rolls or when you get on the brakes, that's when it starts doing some regen, which essentially means charging up that battery. Now, I know what you're thinking, is there any point? And I would say straight off the bat, yes, we will touch on this, but straight off the bat, 110%. Now at first glance, where this isn't a Fiesta or a Focus, it wouldn't strike you as an ST. You've actually got quite a few variants of the Puma. You've got three normal Pumas, which come in one liter engines. And then you have the ST, which is a 1.5, and then you have the ST Hybrid, which again is a one liter. The ST, the normal one, is around 200 brake, and this is around 170 brake horsepower. So it's entirely up to you which one you'd want to choose, but I don't know. If I was really looking to get an ST, it would be the Fiesta or the Focus, but if I need this, because we'll touch on boot size in a minute, for family and for doing the day-to-day -day runs and the school runs, I'd definitely go for the hybrid. Why? Why not? And why would you want something sporty to be as high as a Puma? You'd want a lower center of gravity to fully release all of that performance and you can't really in this. So you're better off saving your money and going for a mild hybrid so you get the best of both worlds. A nice sounding, ST when you want it to, but then at the same time, something that's efficient and spacious and won't break the bank when it comes to topping up fuel. <laughs> now, if you were gonna choose out of the three, which one would you go for? Now, it all depends on what you wanna do and it all depends if, on whether you mind buying a used Fiesta because technically you won't be getting any new ones after this current generation. For me, I've driven the Focus, an absolute dream of a car. It actually has variable suspension. If you do go for the track pad, you can adjust the suspension. This is on the passive SD suspension, which is carried over 
from the normal ST suspension. From what I need out of a car, if I was looking for a one car that does it all, I would opt for the Focus ST. However, if I was being smart and using the smart part of my brain to make a decision, it would have to be something like this, or in fact this. Something that, again, has sports mode, so when you do knock it down a few cogs, put your foot down, sure you get the sound through the speakers. <laughs> But what you really enjoy is the fact you can just press S again, push this back into drive, and you're not at the races. You're just cruising along, doing the speed limit, and yes, the car is a tad firm because it is an ST setup, but you can still see easily, as I have, around 50 mpg on a nice journey. What's there not to like about this setup? Then if you were to go for the Focus ST, you're looking for something you can kind of daily, bearing in mind that that car is quite thirsty, and something you can take to the track and absolutely send. Ford don't make it easy to choose a car, not gonna lie, and that's never a bad thing. <laughs> now, as mentioned, To the red line <laughs> something off track just to mention is it's great having something that's quite nippy while at the same time not hugely overpowered it just means that you can take it all the way up to the red line and still be doing the speed of it that's the top of third gear and I wasn't at 60 now I know what you're thinking and that's a bit underpowered for those people that love their big powered cars but as mentioned for a car that can do the efficiency side of things really really well it's great now as I was gonna say you've got a few drive modes so come out of S mode which is sport mode um, you've got normal you've got eco you've got sport you've got slippery and then we go back to normal now in normal everything softens up as you could imagine steering wise and throttle response in sport the car comes alive becomes the proper ST that it's meant to be in eco the throttle becomes a lot more subdued so you're gonna have to push it a bit further to get going which is great on motorway journeys because you set your speed use the adaptive cruise control if you want and it just rolls along now as mentioned there isn't a full-time button on here where it's a mild hybrid and it decides itself when it thinks you need the battery it works better than I expected we managed to get higher than Ford's acclaimed MPG however there are times when you're in the city or when we're doing 40 miles an hour now where it's just using the engine and I could probably do with it turning on and just using the battery but I get it it's a mild hybrid it's not the full shebang now I touched on comfort briefly but overall day to day when you're not driving over bumps the SD suspension really does do okay when it comes to low speed compression and rebound again it's an SD suspension so you will feel things more than say a standard Puma but it's definitely doable. Don't hit your bumps, your speed bumps at say 20 miles an hour. Hit them at 10 or 12 and you'd be totally fine. Bear in mind that this car is gonna make you smile on the weekend at the expense of being a tad harsh day to day. And you'll be fine. And something else to note is you don't really have to take your hand off the steering wheel. You can just, while you're in drive, flick a paddle and then you go into manual mode however it isn't a dedicated manual mode meaning it will when you come to a stop go back into drive and if you wanted to like we are in m6 right now or d6 hold the right paddle it flashes and now it's back into automatic a little kick down and it's doing everything that it needs to do now something that i've got to applaud for doing is if you want the ST you can get it in a manual but if you want the ST hybrid you've got to get it 
in an auto, seven speed auto, and I might not really get loads of you agreeing with this, a hybrid is best suited in an auto. However, with this much power, or with this little power rather, it sometimes feels great to have it in a manual. Then again, you can't knock paddles. You cannot knock paddles. It's always going to be a talking debate. Ford Focus in manual ST felt absolutely amazing. And this <laughs> on the paddles feels great. Would it be more engaging as a manual? Probably. But would I see 50 mpg? Definitely not. You'd be looking at around 42. And with that, also on the motorway bearing in mind, six gears, you'd probably be at 70 and the car would be revving at nearly or close to 3,000 RPM. This sits, when you're doing 70, around 2,300-ish RPM, which isn't the greatest revs to be burning fuel at, but it won't be as bad as a manual. Again, on the hybrid gauge, it says it's using full battery to support me getting up to the speed limit. And now I'm on the brakes, it's recharging the battery. A typical mild hybrid, that can still put a smile on your face. Yeah. Recently, guys, I've got to give it to myself. I've been picking some good cars to bring on the channel, and this year, I'm not bringing anything on the channel just for the sake of it. If you see a car on the channel, it's because I've got a huge interest in the car. It's a car that I could possibly be interested in buying, and it's a car that I'm really curious about. And my curiosity, has been confirmed that this is a lot of fun. <laughs> so what's missing? There's got to be something missing from this car. No car is perfect, they say. Well, if you're smart, you'd know what Ford are doing. They're looking after you, or looking after your wallet, I'd say. At the same time, trying to give you a bit of fun, and that's a great combo. These seats are dropped straight in from every other ST you'd find. Very supportive. Lumber support's there for the long journeys. Sound again through the speakers, but exterior-wise, it still sounds great. really complain? Can we really find something? Not really. Most sports modes absolutely suck. Throttle's not too aggressive. On, off, on, off. With it not having loads of power, it's not snappy at all. I did wake up this morning and check the tyres before I left because I saw it was raining. And these tyres might not be everyone's cup of tea because they're not a Michelin, but the Continental Sport Contact 6, in the wet, with this power anyway, I haven't got any issues putting the power down. In fact, have we launched this yet? Wow. <laughs> to 30 in 3.18, and zero to 60 in 7.2, bearing in mind that it's wet. So there we have it on a wet, windy day, saying goodbye to the Fiesta ST and potentially, for some people, saying hello to the more grown up Puma ST Hybrid, a car that I feel, for once, is actually deserving off the sport variant badge. So when the car arrived and I had to chuck something in the boot, I was quite surprised at how small the boot was until I put my hand in this hole and lifted it up and found out that that in fact is how big the boot is meant to be. Something else that I failed to mention as well is that I think it's quite cool that Ford haven't plastered any hybrid stickers or badges on this car. Nine times out of ten when there is a hybrid variant of a car that is out already, they tend to put a hybrid badge on the back or normally 
just over here on the wing. Something else that's quite cheeky as well is that this license plate says Ford Motor Company ST. That's naughty. So yes, you beautiful people, I'm gonna head home and get out of this rain. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please smash the thumbs up button, subscribe for loads more content to come, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and God bless.